In this video, we're gonna teach you 10 pro tips which will help you improve your climbing and hopefully climb harder. Let's do it. Let's do it. Snail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the first tip we're gonna look at is swapping feet. Cool, so swapping feet really depends how big the hold is. So if it's big enough, what you're gonna focus on is instead of standing right in the middle of this foothold and taking up all the space, so there's no space for my other foot, I'm actually gonna stand off to the side because this foothold's still good enough on that edge, but then I can swap feet without worrying too much. And if you sort of not left the space, you can use a bad bit of it and come in, use a bad bit of it, come up towards the edge, and come over. So that's great if the foothold's big enough to put two feet on. Um, a lot of the time it's not. So if the foothold's smaller, and we'll go on a small foothold search. So if you can't fit two feet on at the same time, and it's pretty little, so if I put one foot on there, I can't put a second one in, you're gonna have to do like a true foot swap. So the way I like to do it is I put my foot above like that. So there's, it's like pre-placed and then slowly slide the bottom foot out until you're there. Wasn't very nice one. And there. So the other way you can do it, if you don't want to come in from over the top, and it, it will really depend on the foothold, it's worth experimenting, is you can kind of come in from the side. So I can peel this up and out and then come in from below. So any space that I've got, I sort of put that part of the foot on then roll it on, out from side to side. So drop knees have lots of different uses in different places. So in some situations, it will let you reach a lot further, but in steeper ground like this, it's really useful for just moving more efficiently. So instead of getting in every position, pulling up like that and then reaching out, you're gonna use the twist to move through the position like that. So instead of really pulling with your arms, it all comes into the legs. So I can do it on this blue boulder. It's like, I don't even have to bend my arms to climb this boulder because I'm moving on my hips. So it means that I can climb hard, steep boulders without actually pulling really hard. So if I try to do that front on, like, you'd have to like really pull. Whereas if I come into the position, twist the arm in, then I can go a really long way off twisted. So I guess that's the best way of describing it. Oh, obviously that's more, you combine that together with pulling as it gets harder, but on stuff like that, you can really reach a long way off straight arms. So it's all about limiting the amount of strength you need to climb hard, which should let you climb harder. That is sort of its usage on steep ground to move efficiently with straight arms. And um, we're gonna look at sort of how to get into it and maybe its relevance in like more vertical terrain. So on this pink boulder, I'm gonna pull on and get into this high position. I'm gonna put my foot on straight, then twist it. And then that'll allow me to reach further. And now I can, from that, I can reach all the way over here if I want to. Uh, she's just gonna go to there. So, you can put it in straight, but generally it's easier to go like that, drop the knee and really focus on it and go out. So, sort of just play around with that. One thing I really like to do in my warm up is when I'm like doing my first climbs, is to do some super over exaggerated drop knees. You might not actually end up using it all that much, but just like, like constant practice will help you like bring it out when you need it. The biggest thing on volumes is how much surface area you're putting on. So I think the sort of the naive approach is to stand up on a toe like this. Get up there. It's to stand up on a toe. But if you're stood up on a toe, you have like minimal surface area. So you're trying to get as much surface area in contact with the volume. So that normally means drop your heels. So instead of standing up on a toe, I'm standing on the full patch of rubber. And then that's like super comfortable for me to stand on there, even though it's quite a high volume. Um, whereas if I was up on my toe, I'm relying on like a really small patch of rubber and it's like tires on a car. It's like a, um, a road bike is much slippier than a mountain bike because you have less contact with the rubber on the road. So drop the heel, get as much surface area as possible. The longer you're on the wall, the more tired you're gonna get. Imagine if you were hanging off a fingerboard, the first 10 seconds, probably not that hard. If you were trying to be there for two minutes, it would probably get quite desperate. So if we climb fast, that means that we reduce the amount of pump. It also is really important for being as like sweat free as possible. So if I'm projecting something, one of the things I try and focus on is speeding up as much as possible um, and kind of repping out the moves that I know in order to have more power for the moves where I'm gonna struggle. So 
This yellow one's quite a good example. In an ideal world, you climb really quickly. If you watch Andre climb, he'll climb really fast, and then on the bits that he needs to focus, he'll like slow down, focus on the hard moves. So I think a good way for practicing this skill is to climb stuff like overly quickly, and you kind of push the envelope of your speed. So I'm gonna try and climb this yellow really quick. But you're trying to stay focused on good decisions, making sure you don't rush anything, but limiting the amount of time that you're on the wall. So, if I was on that climb for two minutes, I'd have got quite tired because I was on it for 15 seconds. It wasn't too hard at all. So flagging, the idea is to use your foot as a counterbalance to push yourself inwards. So instead of using a foothold, so imagine I kind of want a foothold there to go over it, but I have got one, but we'll pretend I don't. So I can flag, brace myself against the wall, and then use that to pull upwards. So there are two types of flag. There's that outside flag, or you can also inside flag. So using it as a balance, come in like that. You come in there, and then again, foot braced against the wall, counterbalance, and come in. This is like one of the basic techniques of climbing. It's super foundational. So master it, make it good. And there is nothing better than getting a forced inside flag. Incredibly niche and incredibly beautiful. So if the holds are too far apart to reach st statically, that's not gonna work. We do what we call a dyno. So basic is a jump. So key parts of a dyno is you're gonna to wanna to start, sink low, push inwards, use your legs, really push off them, and then really like aim with your hips. So for me, my hips are gonna do an arc, so I'm gonna push them up against the wall and they're gonna come out like that. And then while you're in the air, eye up the hole, make sure you grab it nicely. Down, thrust of the hips, hips in, and catch. Super easy. So, as again, hips are gonna follow like this. They're gonna come down, they're gonna follow this arc of the wall. Gonna, not, gonna try and jump as close as possible into the wall. Drive from the legs, and be looking at the finish hold when I go. Oh, I can go back. I'm taking a quick tip from the brakes video because I found a fun <laughs> project. Yes! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On repeat. Uh, yeah, that's how to dine <laughs> Up and down. Up and down. Cool, so right now we're looking at rock overs. So rock over is when you're transferring your weight across and then up. Now, this is actually a really good thing that they've got the hanger is these magic moments. Um, so these basically guide you through some of the like key techniques from climbing all the way from like super easy to a bit complex. So um, we're looking at a rock over. The key with this is to make sure you get all the way over, get the weight over your foot, and then you stand up. I think a key mistake that a lot of people make is they try and like stand up while their foot is still out there. So they're trying to use that left foot, but not being able to get up. So if we look at it on a climb, there's a nice one up here. This move here. So if we use that foothold up there, you want to get on there, weight all the way over, really push that knee downwards, and then come up like that. So, and again, if I try to do that from here, I'm going to be really awkwardly over the foothold, whereas I can transfer all my weight underneath my hips like that, go all the way over, and go as far as I like, like that. So, Again, super useful technique in like vertical and slabby terrain. Um, but the most important thing to think is to keep going over a bit further than you need to, and then you'll be able to stand up. So heel hooks are a super useful technique 
Um, generally, it's when you have a hold off to the side and you're trying to pull in that direction. So in this situation, I'm gonna put my heel on here and we use it to pull over in this direction and then get up to here. And now I'm struggling to like generate leftwards. So if I let go of my left hand, I'm gonna slip off. So if I put a left heel up, that is gonna allow me to come off nice and relaxed and move up through it. So in this situation, I'm gonna do a nice high heel. Basically use it like the hand I was previously using and use that to pull in this direction. Shuffle it in, another heel. And I think that's all the heel hooks on this boulder. Finish it off. So, when you're using a heel hook, the key thing to pull over it nicely is instead of just hanging off it straight like that, you're gonna to wanna to point your toe. What that's gonna do is it's gonna kind of pull you over in that direction and allow you to kind of claw in on it a bit more like a hand. Gives you a little bit more flexibility. Heel hooks, they're everywhere, especially as it gets steeper. Um, they can allow you to get your foot a bit closer to your hand and allow you to pull over in that direction. If it feels like you're swinging off in one direction, look for a heel over there. It will keep me pulling back that way. A mantle is the technical climbing term for hanging below a ledge to get you stood off on it. So we've got a lovely nice ledge here to practice on. Um, it's not totally vertical, so this thing is pretty tricky. But basically what you're gonna do, you can, on something like this, I'll always put my heel up to kind of help me pull myself over. But the kind of basic mantle is you pull up, you're gonna turn one hand and then end up pressing both of the hands like this. So I, I don't know if anybody's seen like a muscle up, you pull up, and then you end up like over the top like that and then you push up like that. It's basically like that, but on a ledge. So in this situation, I am gonna use a heel, put a heel on. I'm gonna turn this inside hand, push up, push off that hand, turn this one, and then worry about where I'm going. Oh, these holes are good. So when you do it, you wanna make sure you're getting in over the top and close to the wall so you don't tip out the back. But I've just got so close that I've scratched my chin. So it's quite sore now. So if you get a scratch on your chin, it means you're doing a good job. <laughs> so finally, it's time to bring it all together. All of these techniques on their own individually are great, but what makes you a really solid climber is your ability to use them all fluently and mix and match as you move through a boulder. So some stuff will work some places, some stuff will work others. The, the sort of joy of being a climber and improving and getting better is that you're able to use all of this stuff like in the right situations at the right time. That's the like, the key skill to being a climber. So I'm gonna climb a boulder and we'll see which ones I do. That's our top 10 tips for being a better climber. That's the end of the video. Massive thanks to Alex, and also a huge thanks to the Climbing Hangar Reading. If you're watching this now, they are open. They have amazing world-class facilities, incredible boulders, amazing training area just behind me, a gym, everything you need, really friendly staff. Uh, all the links are below for any information you need from the Climbing Hangar to get started climbing. It's the best sport in the world. Let me know if these tips helped, and I'll see you on the next one. Love you, bye, peace.